welcome to Variety Bandbox. How do you do, everybody? This is Philip Slesser speaking from the stage of the Cambridge Theatre London, presenting the people of variety to a variety of people. Supporting our artists today, we have, as usual, Billy Turnant's orchestra with the maestro himself, Billy Turnant. <laughs> Opening our programme, as usual, with musical entertainment, if we can really call today's first turn musical, we present once again those two crazy zanies, complete with washboard, frying pan, bulb horns, and other kitchen and garage equipment, and incidentally with Frank Davison at the piano, we present indeed Albert and Les Ward. We welcome back to Bandbox after a long absence, a musician who is going to play, first of all, a medley of hits of yesterday, and here he is, the whispering pianist, Roy Stevens.
And now Roy Stevens will play some tunes that you'll hear as you tune on the dial today. They include Time May Change, Heartbreaker, Teresa, and Goodnight Sweetheart. Our next performer is one of the more recent successes on this program. She is a charming young lady who is a very clever singer and impressionist. Here she comes, Janet Brown. Our lovely stairway to the stars It would be lovely if I This is Janet Brown inviting you once again to climb my stairway to the stars. Let's stop at flat number one to meet America's queen of comedy, the girl whose face has sunk a thousand ships, Miss Martha Ray. Oh, hello, folks. Come right in and stand up while I sit down and tell you a crazy little story. It's crazy, but it's fun. Oh. <laughs>
Thank you very much. You know, the last time I was on Variety Band Box, you met an old friend of mine all the way from the north. Well, she enjoyed meeting you so much, but here she is again to tell you all how she's getting on, my old friend from Glasgow, Mrs. McTavish. Hello, how are you? <laughs> oh, here, uh, Janet just told you I'm from Glasgow, but that's not where I really belong. No, no, I was born in a wee place called Glen McLucky. Maybe some of you know it. Oh, my family still live there, they do. There's my brother, Willie. He's got a farm, you know. But he's had awful bad luck. He started off with chickens, but that was a swindle. Do you know, a man from London sold him one of the incubator things. It that blooming thing two years and it never even laid a single egg. <laughs> he met an awful nice couple with a car. But between you and me, I liked him better than I liked her. She was what you call a backseat driver. And you know, her husband was telling me that the last time they were out driving... She sat in the back and nagged and nagged and nagged the whole way. He got that fed up that when they reached the level crossing and saw a train coming, he drove halfway across and stopped the car. His wife got into a terrible state. She said, for heaven's sake, John, move the car, get it away from here. She said, listen here, you, I've just had about enough. All day long you've been telling me how to drive the car. Well, I've got my half across, you get yours over. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. I've got it enough, y'all. I'm away for a cup of tea, so cheerio, cheerio. Well, now comes a wizard of the xylophone. What's a xylophone, after all? Just a lot of bits of wood strung on a frame and hit with little hammers. But those hammers really make it sing and dance when they're in the flashing hands of Douglas Maynard. <laughs> Thank you. 
here really is something. On the stage, uh, coming, marching on now, 25 London policemen. Real live London bobbies in uniform. Uh, these bobbies... There they are. The boys in blue, and when constabulary duty is done for the day, there's nothing these guardians of the law like better than singing. And it's with the very greatest pleasure that we present for the first time on the air, under their conductor, Police Constable Charles Clark, the singers of the J Division Metropolitan Police Choir. <laughs> Now, today, here in London, the sun is once more shining, the rain has very nearly gone, but there remains to dampen our spirits one last small drip. And uh, here he is, of course, your resident comedian, Derek Roy. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. Good evening, patients. And now for a surprise. For months, I've been planning a trip to the moon, and now at last, my rocket ship is ready to go. At this moment, a commentator is waiting to describe the momentous scene as the rocket ship leaves from the airstrip in Hyde Park. Hyde Park, where so much pioneer work has already been done in nearly every field. And so, over to Hyde Park. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the start of this great adventure. All sorts of celebrities have arrived, including the glamorous Miss May East. Uh, perhaps you'll say a few words. Uh, if, you, uh, if you were going on this trip, Miss East, what is the first thing you would look for? The man in the moon, honey. The man in the moon. <laughs> oh, of course, yes. Thank you. And now standing next to Miss East is that famous scientist, Professor Goonstein. Tell me, tell me, Professor, uh, would you, uh, do you like this sort of thing? You know, these rocket exhibitions and everything like that? How did you, how did you come to be connected with it? Well, they needed my brains behind a rocket like this. And uh, what about Derek Roy? He needed a rocket like this behind his brains. <laughs> Oh, hello, there's, there's something wrong. One of the, one of the rockets is ignited. It, it's right behind me, East. It's going off. Whoosh! Ah! What a terrible accident. But she's recovered. She's just going to speak. Why, Professor, what on earth are you doing? 
I think you're a bit of a wolf. No, no, I'm no wolf. It's just the way I say hello. Woo, woo, woo. And now over to the intrepid leader of the exhibition, the expedition, Derek Roy. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, patience. And now for coming to see me off. Uh, and thank you very much because I'm very, very interested and very pleased to be going on this rocket trip to the moon. Now, this uh, rocket Excuse trip... Excuse me, uh, telegrams from Mr. Roy. Ah, uh, telegrams of congratulations, I expect, yes. Now, let me see. Ah, yes. Here's one from the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Good luck on your outward trip to the moon, Stafford Cripps. P.S. Don't forget, not more than 35 pounds. <laughs> Well, time to leave. All ready, Captain Turnant? Aye, aye, sir. Goodbye, everybody. Be back soon. (laughs) Contact, light the rockets. Can't. The matches are all wet. Must be test matches, though. (laughs) Try these. Whoosh. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. Did I splash? Right, we're off. Captain Tennant, check the store. Aye, aye, sir. What's in this parcel? What's in this parcel? Oh, I know a funny story about that. Now, turn it up, Tennant. What's in this parcel? I don't know. We got those yesterday. Oh, yes, that's right. Five nice, fresh English ducks. I remember, yes. What sort of eggs do they come from? Oval ones. (laughs) Now, come on, let's, uh, let's get on with the inventory. Uh, one pair of reinforced metal pants. One pair of reinforced metal pants. Got them down? Yes. Pull them up again. <laughs> one tin health salt. One tin health salt. Got them down? Yes. Careful. <laughs> what's in the bottles over there? Lemonade. And the bottles over there? Orange aid. And what's in all those cans? Marshall aid. <laughs> Uh, make an entry in the logbook. Haven't got a logbook. No logbook? Why not? Couldn't get a permit for the wood. Oh. <laughs> Whoosh! Good heavens, what was that? A black comet has just passed us, sir. Lend me the glasses. Ah, just as I thought. MacDonald Bailey going to see his dad. <laughs> Who's his dad? Old Bailey. Oh, listen, listen, the radio. <laughs> this is the Moonlight Programme. The Lunar Broadcasting Corporation on its wavelength of 500 pretty little moonbeams. Flash, special bulletin. A strange object is approaching the moon. It is suspected to contain men from the Earth. We don't know what they've come for, but you'd better lock up all your cigarettes. (laughs) Switch off. I'm sure there are men on the moon, Billy. Wait till I take a couple of them back to the Earth. I'll make my fortune. I'll be lousy with money. You're lousy without it. (laughs) Now, Turnant, you've been opening my letters again. Look out! (laughs) Oh! We've hit the moon. There's someone at the door. Who's there? It's the moon police. Open up. Open up. <laughs> Who's that at the door? It's the moon detective. A moon detective? Yes, a lunatic. <laughs> Listen, he's saying something. Where are you from? We are from the Earth. Ah, when I was a little boy, they told me about the man in the Earth. <laughs> But what on moon are you doing here? We're looking for new faces. Well, you certainly need them. (laughs) Tell me, do you have crooners on the earth? Why, yes. Do you? Yes. Always singing about earth and girth. You know the sort of thing. Earth light becomes you. (laughs) Ah, yes. Really a most unmoonly sound. But the women love it. Women? Oh, yes. Yes. When they listen, they earth about as if they're earth struck. Oh, my wife's different. She's very down to moon. Oh, you're married then? Yes, just. I'm on my honey earth. <laughs> ah, but I'm forgetting. I must make a report about all this. I'm afraid I must charge you with not having an import license, landing outside the moon government controlled area and parking on the wrong side of the road. I hope you brought plenty of food with you because it's rationed here. You'll have to register under the Moon Health Act for Moon National Service, make an application for Moon Ration and Clothing Books. What about petrol? That's only issued to government departments. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This all sounds very familiar. What sort of a government have you got here? 
Well, we are working out a system on the moon in which the government and people are in tune. <laughs> and we do things with a jerk. Even MPs mustn't shirk. We even hope to make it work quite soon. Oh, we take care of each person on the moon. Though he may be very learned or a loon, or a dustman or a duke, either firstborn or a fluke, for whatever his possessions, we are making no concessions. And though life is getting ropier, we are heading for utopia, where everything's perfection, if we win the next election. But as long as we are nifty, we'll get in in 1950, and we'll make even a buffoon shine with our system. We should soon shine, if it weren't a lot of moonshine, on the moon. Well, we've entered the band box for today, and this is Philip Schlesser saying goodbye for now. This program was originally broadcast to home listeners of the BBC.